Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United have an advantage in the Erling Haaland transfer chase. Solskjaer keeps calling Erling Haaland to persuade him to join Manchester United. But recent reports have said we are now out of the transfer race for Erling Haaland. There's a good chance that Haaland will leave Dortmund in the summer transfer window if Borussia Dortmund fail to qualify for the Champions League. Like I've said, I would love Manchester United to sign Erling Haaland because he's a type of calibre player that Man United need and plus he would assure us goals. Solskjaer worked with Erling Haaland at Mulder. He gave him his debut at just the age of 16. Uh, but earlier on this season, Solskjaer came out and said that he was following Erling Haaland's progress and he said he was keeping in touch with Haaland. Back in December 2019, Solskjaer and Woodward went to Norway to meet up with Erling Haaland to negotiate a possible move to Man United. One report said that Erling Haaland's transfer to Real Madrid is practically done because it said prior to that he favours a move to Real Madrid. So us and Chelsea have been handed a blow. So many clubs have been in for him. Dortmund are demanding in the excess of £100 million. Next year he has a release clause of £70 million. Since his arrival at Dortmund he has been a revelation. He's been at Dortmund over a year. Dortmund paid just £17 million for him and he's got a contract with Dortmund until 2024. His agent, Mino Riola, said earlier on this season that there's around six clubs in England that can afford Haaland. But there has been a lot of players on our agenda. On my last video, I give you the news on Raphael Varane. It's very likely he will leave Real Madrid. Mundo Deportivo have said that Rafael Varane's future is in doubt with Real Madrid. And he's high up on our transfer wish list. And he's valued at around £63 million. Pounds. I'd certainly take Rafael Varane at Manchester United. World class centre half, he'd go very well alongside Harry Maguire in our back line. And he's highly experienced, he's 27 years of age. Rafael Varane has been at Real Madrid for 10 years. He's made over 300 appearances and he's won 18 major honours. Real Madrid paid 10 million euros for him from Lens. He's got a contract with Real Madrid until 2022. Back in 2018, Woodward was prepared to sanction a £100 million move. Our top two defensive targets are Paul Torres from Villarreal and Jules Conde from Sevilla. Now apparently, Paul Torres is interested in coming to Manchester United. Pau Torres has a release clause of £50 million, but we believe we can get him for less than his £50 million release clause. He's got a contract with Villarreal until 2024, and he's been at Villarreal for a long time. I don't really know much about him, to be honest. We're having a Jules Cone day. I'd certainly take him at Manchester United. His performances for Sevilla have been outstanding. He's been at Sevilla almost two years. Sevilla paid £22 million for him from Bordeaux in the summer of 2019. He's got a contract with Sevilla till 2024. Now, the last time I read up regarding Jules Conde, it said we'd been handed a boost in our pursuit of the player because Sevilla reduced their asking price to 50 million for Conde 
So they're not £20 million pounds off because originally they were demanding £70 million plus add-ons. There was narratives coming out earlier on this season saying that we was unwilling to meet his £68 million pound release clause. But it says we was prepared to pay around £61 million. But I'm expecting Man United to make around three or four signings in the summer transfer window. This year's summer transfer window is huge for Manchester United. You can identify the weaknesses in the squad. Our transfer budget has already been revealed. It's £80 million. A lot of Man United fans are shocked in that aspect. Because... £80 million pounds is nowhere near enough for us to get the players we want to recommend in. Uh, this is why it said Solskjaer is planning to sell at least four players to bolster our transfer budget and he's hoping to raise as much as £60 million. Pounds. So that would take our transfer budget to £140 million. Pounds. If Solskjaer is still Manchester United manager in the summer transfer window... I'm expecting him to get the backing he deserves because obviously we've got John Murtough. He's our director of football and the club made the right decision by getting a director of football in because I said that's one of the structural changes that we need at the club. And Plus Murtough knows the club inside out because he's been at Man United for like seven or eight years. You know, Darren Fletcher, he's our technical director and he knows the club through thick and thin. Uh, Solskjaer's already di already discussed our transfer targets with our new recruitment team and not so long ago he was discussing our transfer plans in general for the summer. Woodward did a statement earlier on this season and he says the progress by Solskjaer and the players this season is clear. So in that aspect, Woodward is backing Solskjaer. So Woodward thinks there's been progress from Man United from last season. You know, our board have got a soft stance on Solskjaer with him being a legend of the club. And the main explanation why he's still Manchester United manager because he is a club legend. Disregarding being a club legend, I don't think he'd have been Manchester United manager now. But you know, towards the end of last year, Woodward came out and said that he will back Solskjaer with a long-term plan centred around summer transfer windows and he come out and showed his support for Solskjaer several times. Oh, the board's been one of the biggest issues at the club for a while. You know, Woodward's been at the club since 2012, the Glazers have been at the football club since 2005. So far, Ollie has endured four transfer windows as permanent Man United manager and he's spent almost £300 million. He's brought players like Dan James and wan Bissaka, Harry Maguire in. Also brought Bruno Fernandes in, brought Odina Gallo in on loan. Odina Gallo is no longer at the club now though because he left in January. And obviously brought players like Donny van der Beek in, Alex Tellez, Edison Cavani, Ahmad Dilo Traore in for Gundo Palestri. Gundo Palestri, don't forget we loaned him out. So last summer we made, was it around five signings? Uh, we actually got four of those players on deadline day. But as yet, Solskjaer hasn't got all the players. <coughs> that he wanted to recommend in. We are going to sell players in the summer transfer window. You know, there's a lot of Manchester United fans that are saying we need to sell Anthony Martial in the summer because he's been out of form for the vast majority of this season. You know, he's had his chances, but he hasn't converted them. But earlier on this season, Solskjaer said he's back in Martial to rediscover his form. And he said he had been impressed with his work rate. I think it was last season Oli gave him that number nine shirt. Martial's just come back from injury, by the way. A hip injury that was. And he had an injury just before that. 
Last season, Martial was good, and he was good in his debut season under Louis van Gaal. Martial has been at the club over five years now. We got Martial from Monaco for £54 million. Pounds. Edison Cavani. Now, I'd like him to stay for next season, but there's actually a good chance he's going to leave in the summer transfer window. Um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is hopeful, though, that Cavani will stay for next season, and Solskjaer's revealed that we have been in talks with Edison Cavani over a new contract. Football Insider said not so long ago that Cavani had reached a verbal agreement to join Boca Juniors at the end of the season. If he leaves in the summer transfer window, we won't receive a transfer fee because Cavani's contract expires in June. But we do have an option to trigger his contracts for the further year. Uh, Solskjaer said earlier on this season that Cavani was closer to Boca Juniors than staying at Man United. And his father came out a few weeks ago, Cavani's, and said that Cavani's unhappy and he doesn't feel comfortable in England and he wants to leave. Uh, prior to that, reports in Argentina said that Cavani's decided to leave the club after one season and he wants to go and join Boca Juniors. Cavani's made a fantastic impact since he's come in, but he's sustained a few injuries, just come back from injury not so long ago. We got him on a free transfer last summer. He signed a one-year contract with Man United with an option of a second year. Uh, Juan Mata, good chance we're going to sell him in the summer transfer window. Because Juan Mata doesn't get in our team. And my element of concern about him, he's lost that yard of pace. Plus, he's out of injury at the moment. But in the games he's been involved in, he's done well. I think he's had a good career at Man United. Matt has been at the club over six years now. We got one matter in a deal worth £40 million from Chelsea back in 2014. He's made over 200 appearances for us in all competitions and he's scored 50 goals. Earlier on this season, he rejected an 18 million a year contract offer to play in Sergio Arabia. His current contract expires in June, but these are an option to trigger his contracts for the further year. Now, Donny van der Beek, there's a good chance he's going to leave in the summer transfer window. Not so long ago, it says. Donny van der Beek felt loved at the club despite his lack of game time but prior to that he says van der Beek wants to quit Man United after one season due to his lack of game time and he wanted to hold showdown talks with Ed Woodward regarding his future. Van der Beek obviously started in the game against Leicester. He did play a part in Mason Greenwood's goal to be fair, good little dummy but prior to that was very, very quiet. He has just come back from injury, but he, he hasn't played nowhere near as much as I expected. Most of his appearances have come from the bench. He's only started two games in the league this season. But earlier on this season, Ollie made an admission saying that Van de Beek's unhappy at the club due to his lack of game time, but he promised him more game time at Manchester United. ESPN said back in January that we rejected several loan offers for Van der Beek because we was reluctant to let him go. Mark Hughes has been talking about it and he said Van der Beek looks lost at the club and he's edging closer to a Man United exit. You know, Van der Beek is key in the Jadon Sancho deal because reports have recently said we could use Donny van der Beek in a swap deal with Borussia Dortmund and we are looking at around three players from Dortmund. We've got Van der Beek in a deal worth £40 million. We paid £35 million up front and there was £5 million in add-ons. He's got a contract with the club until 2025 and he can play in three different roles so he is versatile. Matic, there's a good chance we'll sell him in the summer transfer window because he isn't one of our first choice midfielders and like I've said, I've got my strong reservations about Matic because he's always been a slow player and analysing the vast majority of his games at Man United, he's been inconsistent. But he's had some good games. The club made a mistake by giving him that new three-year contract before the start of this season. 
He's been at the club almost four years now. We got him in a deal worth £40 million pounds from Chelsea in 2017. Uh, Fred, you know, do you think he could leave the football club in the summer transfer window? Fred got heavily criticised, reflecting on his abysmal performance against Leicester in the FA Cup quarter-final. You know, he gave the ball away countless times and he was accountable for Leicester's first goal. That was probably Fred's worst performance in a Manchester United shirt and he certainly wasn't worth the £52 million we got him for. I'd keep him potentially past the summer though because he has enjoyed some good games as a Man United player and aspects of his game in some games have improved to his credit. But he's not at that level yet. Uh, Paul Popper, still a good chance that we'll sell him in the summer transfer window but I want us to keep Paul Popper potentially past the summer because Paul Popper is an imperative player and he brings creativity to the team. Disregarding Popper... There's no creativity and we are far too defensive and we have been getting the best out of him in recent months. Pogba has just come back from a thigh injury. Uh, Phil Jones, um, I want him to leave because he doesn't get in our 11. Phil Jones has been a long serving at Manchester United. This is his 10th season at the club. He's the only outfield player that's still here from the Ferguson era. Is Phil Jones. But he's been out of injury for over a year. Uh, De Gea, good chance we'll sell him in the summer transfer window so we can make Dean Henderson our first choice goalkeeper. Uh, Eric Bay, do you think he'll go in the summer transfer window? Now, Eric Bay has come out and apologised to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and his Manchester United teammates for his disrespectful behaviour. Um, obviously, Bay was furious with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because he felt disrespected and not wanted. Um, he was furious because he was left out of the squad for the game in Milan. And Bay believes we're only offering him a new contract to simply increase his asking price. Bay has just 15 months left on his current contract. I'd like Bay to stay potentially past the summer because Bay is a very good centre half. My only element of concern about Bay is injury prone, so in that aspect, he is a liability. And Lingard and Delaw, I think we'll be looking to get rid of them permanently. So imagine if we sell them players in the summer transfer window will generate a substantial amount and it'll help us with our rebuilding process. But there's also a lot of players that are going to stay in the summer transfer window. Um, like I've said, of in regards to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he's not the long-term manager for Manchester United. I think a lot of Man United fans will agree with me on that aspect. Ole outs are trending again on social media. Obviously, every Man United fan that wants Ole out have got reasons behind why they want him out. For Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to save his job, he must win the Europa League this season. The Europa League is our only chance of any silverware this season. We fail to win the Europa League, there's a good chance he will be sacked as Manchester United manager. That's Danny Murphy's verdict on it. Danny Murphy believes a top four finish without a trophy isn't good enough to Man United standards, which it isn't, so I've got to agree with him on that aspect. You know, Solskjaer's not yet won a trophy as Man United manager and we haven't won a trophy since 2017. A new contract for Solskjaer's imminent. You know, there was narratives coming out the other week saying that Ole has agreed to sign a new £9 million a year contract, so he's being given a pay rise. Sources at Old Trafford said that talks are set to begin any day over this new deal. 
because Ollie's now what into the final 12 months of his three year contract. The question is, does Solskjaer deserve a new contract at the club? In some aspects, yeah, in some aspects, no, because we have endured some good periods under Ollie, but we've also endured very bad periods under him where you can turn around and say, yeah, he was lucky not to be sacked. You know, if we do eventually sack Solskjaer, you know, who's going to come in to replace him? You know, there's a lot of Man United fans that are saying we need to get Allegri in. Um, I think some United fans would take Julian Nagelsmann in. Uh, Pochettino was the favourite at one point to take over. We should have actually got Pochettino in, so that's a mistake the club made by not getting him in. But, you know, if we actually sack Solskjaer at the end of this season or whenever, I don't think it will really solve anything because when we are inconsistent, not all of the blame stems from him, to be honest with you. And I've got to probably say he's our best manager since Ferguson. You know, this is his second full season at the club and he has been Manchester United manager for over two years. So he's gained some managerial experience reflecting now on his being with us, but Oli hasn't got a proven pedigree as a manager and he doesn't have that big club arrogance as a manager. So we've got to get a manager in with a big with the big club arrogance and a proven pedigree and a manager that can get the right players in and a manager that can get us back being consistent persistently not just consistent, you know, sometimes or the odd time, that isn't good enough to our standards. And in the vast majority of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's games, he's been too tactically naive, especially in a lot of the big games this season. Yeah, there's some games where he's showed tactical flexibility, but he's got to show that persistently. You know, we'll always love Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because he's a club legend. He enjoyed 11 years as a player for Man United, but a lot of United fans are being honest, saying that, you know, he isn't good enough to manage this club. But we have got to credit him in quite a few aspects, to be honest with you, because, you know, you can say there's been progress from last season. You know, we're second in the Premier League. We're unbeaten in our last 22 Premier League away games. You know, Solskjaer got us to the FA Cup quarter-final, got us to the Europa League quarter-final, you know, got us to the EFL Cup semi-final, you know, did well last season in his first full season, got us a third-place finish, got us qualification for the Champions League and guided us to three semi-finals. Um, he has got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he came in as well. Um, he has also made some good signings and I do like the way he has promoted the youth. Because he's brought more young players in and he's given a lot of young players their chances. But I honestly think Ole is in a position that he shouldn't be in. And Solskjaer knew when he'd taken over at Man United it was going to be a massive job. Despite him knowing the club through thick and thin. We probably made a mistake by giving him the job permanently. Maybe we should have waited until the end of that season to decide or not whether he would be the right candidate for Man United. But it's with how well he did when he first came in. So this is why the club decided to give him the job permanently two years ago. But nothing has changed in the last eight years at Man United. You know, it's just been an ongoing cycle of inconsistency. You know, mistakes have been made in the last eight years and that's why we haven't been as consistent as we'd like to have been. You know, three managers have been sacked. Since Ferguson, you know, we sat Moyes after 10 months, worst manager we've ever had. We sat Louis Van Gaal after two years, despite him winning the FA Cup. And we sat Jose Mourinho after two and a half years, despite him winning the Europa League, the League Cup and the Community Shield in his first season. Mourinho also finished second in his first season, so you can say he enjoyed one good season at Man United, but... I've already given you the reasons it didn't work out under Mourinho. You can probably say we got him in too late. Mourinho didn't get on with the board. He had bad disputes with quite a lot of the top players. And in general, the board weren't back in the signings that he wanted to recommend in. So we had only had different managers with different philosophies. We've overpaid for players. 
We've spent over £1 billion since Sir Alex Ferguson retired. You know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013, so we haven't won that now for like eight years. But um, there is good players at Manchester United. And these players that have really, really improved. Our two best players by far this season has been Luke Shaw and Bruno Fernandes. But I have been impressed with Dean Henderson in the games he's been involved in. He started six games in a row now for Man United. He's now reliable enough to become our number one because Dean Henderson has got that experience behind him. He endured two successful loans with Sheffield United. Uh, Merrick Bay, he's a good centre-half. Harry Maguire, he's done well in some games this season, but he's also endured bad games. But either way, definitely not worth the £80 million we got him for. Most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and the second most expensive sign at the club. Um, and Juan Bissaka, you know, he's done well in some games this season where he's got forward well, his crossing's been quite good, he's got into good positions and defensively he's been good, but he's also enjoyed some poor games where he's lacked at attacking intent and he's been caught out far too many times. Freddie's done well in some games this season, but he's also enjoyed poor games as well. Um, Tom Inway, he's a decent player and he's enjoyed some good games this season. Give it Tom Way time, he's only young, he's got a lot of development in him, but he's not at that level as yet. Uh, Paul Pogba, we've been getting the best out of him in recent months. Obviously, um, scored the goal in Milan, that sent us through to the last day of the Europa League. You know, Van der Beek, he's good when he plays, but he doesn't play enough. Um, Marcus Rashford's also good. But he can um, draw bad games as well. Uh, Rashford's actually out with injury at the moment. He's coming a bit injury prone. Is Rashford it is injury prone? Is Rashford isn't he? Because not so long ago he had an ankle injury and he was out with a back injury last season for a while. Uh, Mason Greenwood he's been a revelation since he broke into our first team squad. You know Cavani's made a fantastic impact since he's come in. So there you go, and these. You know, a few players that don't even get in R11 now. You know, two hands Ebe doesn't get in R11. You can say Bay's lost his place in the team. Williams doesn't get in R11. Williams played a lot of games last season. That's only because Luke Shaw had a couple of periods out of injury. You know, Telez, he's played nowhere near as much as I expected. So he doesn't really get in R11, does he? Uh, Juan Mata, he doesn't get in R11. Phil Jones, he doesn't get in R11. Uh, Sergio Romero, he doesn't. We're looking to offload Sergio Romero. I forgot to mention him earlier on. So, yeah. So, anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.